Hey Booktube, I have a book review for you today and that book is Like a Sword Wound by Amit Alton. Uh, this book was originally published in 1998 and has just recently been translated into English by Brandon Freely and Yelda Turetti. Um, and as I've said before, Alton is a prominent novelist in Turkey. He's also a journalist um, and he has been um, imprisoned. Uh, he, I think, was actually released uh, this year because of coronavirus and their concerns about that. Um, but he's been in prison um, and was arrested on September um, 10th of 2016 uh, in a dawn raid for allegedly giving sub subliminal messages the night before um, a failed coup that happened on July 15th of 2016. Um, and his brother, Mehmet, was also arrested with him. And they were charged with attempting to overthrow uh, the constitutional order, um, interfering with the work of National Assembly, and interfering with the work of the government through violence or force. And sorry if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes. So, <clears throat> Alton really draws on his experiences when he's writing this book. Um, and this is the first volume in a quartet um, that encompasses the decline of the Ottoman Empire um, at the end of the 19th century and the rise of Kemal Ataturk in the 1920s. Uh, so ultimately, this is a tale of oppression, which is also what Ahmet Alton is experiencing in modern day Turkey as well. Um, and he faces a lot of the same struggles that his characters are also facing um, in terms of both personal and political oppression. So even though there's this contrast between the two, um, you know, timelines, one is during the Ottoman Empire falling and the other is modern day Turkey, there's still a lot in here that uh, is very, uh, is still ongoing and um, is still very relevant to Ahmet Alton because of what he has experienced given his um, his uh, views and his t um, career as a writer and journalist. So in this book, uh, it starts out with a character who is a recluse. His name is Osman, and he is haunted by ghosts of his family's past. And it is through these ghostly visits that we learn about uh, some of the other characters in the book. And one of those is his grandfather, um, Effendi, who was a leader of a renowned, I'm not going to pronounce this right, I apologize, Teki? Te Tekia? Um, and he um, is going to marry uh, Mefer Hanim, um, who was the 17-year-old daughter of an Ottoman customs director. Um, anyway, she ends up giving birth to a son, and after they, or after the birth, their marriage falls apart, and she ends up, uh, remarrying, um, Hikmet Bey, who was the cosmopolitan son of the Sultan's physician. So, we follow <clears throat> Effendi, and then we also follow... Uh, Hanim and her marriage to um, Hikmet Bey and these two characters we see their marriage sort of unfold and how um, they have very taboo relationship for the time and even now it would be kind of considered taboo um, and so we see how uh, that plays out in this uh, book as well, that some ideas of sex and gender and the roles that people play within marriage um, are definitely changed up and uh, <laughs> you, you see some things in this that you would be shocked by um, especially for that time period. We also follow one of the uh, characters who I think is the most fascinating, and that is, and I'm butchering these names, I apologize, Regit Bey, um, who is Osman's grandfather, 
and he was an officer in the Ottoman army. And he is also witnessing the collapse um, of the regime of the Sultan Ab Abdul Hamid II. And so that regime is collapsing. And so the novel ends um, with the Young Turk Revolution of 1908. All right. So that is sort of the main characters that we follow through the course of this first book and some of the major events that play out in the novel. Um, and like I said, so much of what Alton is writing about in this novel um, is very much a parallel to what is happening in modern day Turkey. And Ahmed himself even says that he is living what happens in his novel. Um, what threw me when I first started reading this book was the fact that the reclusive Osman um, is visited, you know, like I said, by his ghostly ancestors. And so I couldn't figure out at first uh, how that was working. Like, I thought Osman and his grandfather and great-grandfather were all sort of part of the same timeline. And then once it finally occurred to me that he was being visited by these people and he was sort of telling their story through these ghostly visits, it made a lot more sense to me after that. But that was something that at first I was just like, what? You know, because I didn't understand um, or it didn't register to me that it, these were ghostly apparitions that he was sort of seeing um, and it's sort of working as a narrative device to tell the story um, of his great-grandfather and grandfather and their personal lives, their marriages, uh, and what they did in terms of their work, right? Um, and so this was one of those books that I don't think I fully appreciated until I got to the end. Um, and it was partially because, like I said, it took me a while to figure out how all of these characters were connected and what Ahmet Alton was doing um, in terms of, you know, the characters from the past visiting Osman um, and his ghostly <laughs> sort of visitations, I guess, um, as he's telling the story of, of uh, what they did. Um, so, like I said, I don't think I fully appreciated it until I got to the end. I mean, when I first started out, I wasn't even sure I liked it and wanted to continue. And I was like, oh man, you know, I bought this thing and I was really going to love it. And, you know, there's three more books. And then, you know, at first I wasn't sure if I would even finish it. But the further I got along, further I got into it and the more I finally realized the devices that were being used to tell the story, the more I really got into it. And like I said, I really enjoyed learning about uh, Osmond's uh, grandfather. Regit Bey, who is the officer in the Ottoman army, he, in my opinion, is one of the most fascinating characters in all of the, like, political um, machin machinations that were happening at the time were some of the most interesting parts of the book. Uh, I enjoyed the story about um, Hikmet Bey and Hanim, his wife, but... I don't know, that part didn't interest me as much as the story about um, the grandfather. Um, anyway, so once I had finished this book and realized that, you know, it was going to stick with me more than I thought it would at first and that I had actually really enjoyed it, I did some research. Um, I read some reviews and I looked up about Ahmet Alton online. And that was how I learned more about him as a person and as an author. And then also sort of the context behind why he is writing this quartet. Um, and I feel like knowing more about him and his, his life and the fact that he's been imprisoned for things that um, he didn't actually do. And that, you know, he's sort of... Uh, seen as a villain um, in modern day Turkey, I think made this story all the more richer for me because of the fact that you can see so many parallels, even though they're taking place in completely, you know, it's in a completely different time period. 
I can still see these parallels coming together. And I think that is the most fascinating, um, or one of the most fascinating things about this, is that knowing Ahmet Alton's story enriches the, the novel. Um, and I don't remember exactly when the second book comes out. I think it comes out later this year from Europa, but I'm not positive. I was going to look this up before I started filming and I forgot. Um, but I would strongly encourage anyone who is interested in um, Turkey and the Ottoman Empire and, you know, what was happening during the time when it collapsed. Um, anyone who wants to read more about that time period in history um, to check this uh, novel out and the ones that follow it once they're all published um, because I feel like this is just a really fascinating read and I feel like you learn a lot from it and like I said also knowing more about Alton definitely enhanced the story for me um, and so yeah I gave this I think four out of five stars on Goodreads it didn't quite meet the five star because I felt like the beginning was a little bit confusing with Osmond and his visitations from his ghostly ancestors, but I still really, really enjoyed it, and I really feel like it's worth the read. Um, anyway, so that is my review for you. I hope you all have a good day, and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks, BookTube.